You made a covenant with Allah. You are on earth today to fulfill the covenant. And then you shall return back to Allah to be audited. These are the three simple steps that every human being will go through. However, what it is that you have decided to do that is going to bring you back to Allah with a clean slate, with as best good behavior as ever, so that you can reap the biggest reward. Don't be fooled by thinking like you will enter Jannah just by the Rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah. Don't be fooled by that. That Rahmah is for those that are eligible for it. Who are those eligible for it? Those who stuck to Islam and performed Islam as best as they can. And also once we enter Al-Jannah, our status in Al-Jannah depends on our actions. My brothers and my sisters, do not make the mistake for a split of a second that it is okay to disobey Allah because nobody is guaranteed entrance to Jannah by his action, but all of the Rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah. That is a big lie. That is a carrot that shaitan is dangling in between your eyes. I will put here the equation as simple as it can get so that you understand what Islam is here for. Every morning when you are given your life back, you wake up with an empty stomach. Yes, you've got some leftovers from the nutrition, the food you had last night. But that food you cannot go on for a few other days without impacting your body. And this is why throughout the day you need to refuel so that you get the energy to be able to do what you need to do. When you get hungry, you eat. And then you go perform with the energy that you get from that food until the next station when you start getting hungry. When you start getting hungry, that is your body telling you, I need something to work with. Go on, feed me so I can get the energy to work with. Believe it or not, our soul works the same way as our body. Here is how it goes. When you are in these daily days, when you are going around and doing your things, your behavior, your aqidah, your iman, your faith, everything that you do relies on how much you feed your heart with the iman. When you pray Salat al-Isha and you go to bed, what you do is you refuel with the taqwa and the iman that will last you until Fajr. But if your Salat al-Isha sucks big deal and it's not impactful and it's not really potent, you will have put in it very, food with very, very poor nutrients. They won't get you far. So what happens is, at Fajr, you will wake up. You don't wake up. You are lazy. You pray Fajr with Qulu Wallahu Had. You spend two minutes standing halfway asleep, and then you go to bed. That is the product of what, of what you have fed your soul the night before. But if, Let's say at Fajr time, you give it the best. And this is why Salat al-Fajr, we recite Al-Quran longer. And we take longer and it is loud. So that even people who don't know the Quran by heart get the opportunity to hear the Quran. These days we have these paycheck sheikhs that pray Salat al-Fajr the early morning in five minutes. It's a shame. Wallahi, it's a shame. Normally Salat al-Fajr is our breakfast. If the body has got, we say the most important meal in the day is the breakfast because it sets the tone of the energy for the day. Your metabolism will get kicking based on your breakfast. The same thing for the soul. The amount of the Quran and how much you understand of it and how much you intake at the Fajr Salat will play a major role on the level of your faith throughout the day. A weak Fajr and you will have plenty of sins throughout the day. A strong Fajr, and you will have less sins throughout the day. This is why Salat al-Layl, Qiyam al-Layl, if you stand up at night to pray, be idhnillah, it's a guarantee that you won't commit major sins throughout the day. And even if you commit a minor sin, it's not as evil as somebody else's who did not wake up for Qiyam al-Layl. Why? Because when you stand up at night for Qiyam al-Layl, you supercharge, you eat the super foods, so to speak, or super fruits that really have a huge impact 
anti-oxidant or something like that ilk. So my brothers and my sisters, you wake up in the morning or you are giving back your life in the morning, you wake up with the leftovers of your Salat al-Fajr. If they strong, subhanAllah, you wake up on a good foot. The first thing how you know is when you open your eyes. Do you say the dua or do you just yawn and stand up and start walking? You know how you set your day by the very first words you utter when you wake up. Imagine, that is a beautiful thing. And the way you wake up in this dunya is the way you are going to wake up from your grave on the day of Qiyamah. So, you wake up and then the first thing you do, you go and you do your salat. Allahu Akbar. You charge your body with this salat. You recite the Quran, you charge your body. So when you go out to face the world, you are already very fortified, very nourished. MashaAllah, you've got quality nutrients in you. Of course, when you walk in the street, no, you won't be tempted by this and that uh, sin and evil. And then comes Dhuhr. And then your Iman supply started depleting. By the time of Dhuhr, it started getting very weak. And then comes Dhuhr to boost your Iman up again. And then you supercharge your body, your heart, your soul until Asr. And then Asr again, it depletes, you supercharge, Maghrib comes in, Isha, and you get the idea. So for you to spend of the Iman, you must first put Iman in your body. Don't rely on what you got, because that supply will deplete and will get weakened. And that's how you start, and that's why we say, my Iman is weak. What actually we can say is, Naqusa, in Arabic they say, Naqusa Imana, his Iman has diminished, not weak in English. Again, this is the evil of translation. We should say, my Iman has diminished. There is a threshold you reach. For example, if you just started Islam or you are weak and you are still in dunya, your threshold is one. Then any act that you do will go to three, but you will always go to one. That's when you diminish. But if you work very hard to make the threshold seven or eight, Allahu Akbar, when you are in the weakest point in your Iman, i.e. at eight, you are 10 times better or 16 times better or 100 times better than the one who is in one. And this is why, based on your Iman, what sometimes people do a small act and you consider a huge problem. This is a big disobedience. And to them, as Rasulullah says, for the hypocrite, when he does a sin, he will look at it as if it is a fly on his nose and he just goes with his hand like this to chase it away. But the believer, when he does the same evil, he will look at it as a mountain right on his head about to fall on him. What's the difference between two? It's how much Iman they have got in the heart. So every morning when we wake up, my brothers and my sisters, when Allah gives us back our life, we are given equal opportunities. I.e., we hear, we see, we smell, we talk, everything is fine. And it's our choice which direction we want to go. The world as it is, is split into two. There is no third part and there is no fourth part. It's two. There is the side of Allah and there is the side of shaitan. If you are not in the sight of Allah, you are in the sight of shaitan. Yes, there are those who are at the beginning of the sight. There are those in the middle and there are the ones at the bottom. Even if you are at the beginning of the side of shaitan, you still are in the side of shaitan. My question to you is, why do you choose? Because when you disobey Allah, it's a choice. It is a choice you make at any one time. So as soon as you open your eyes in this morning, decide for yourself which pathway you want to go. The pathway of Allah or the pathway of shaitan. You cannot be in between the two. There is no straight line in between where you are neutral. There is no neutrality in Islam. It's either the side of Allah or the side of shaitan. If you leave your home and you don't do the dua of leaving your home, you are in the side of shaitan. If you delay the salat, you are in the side of shaitan. If you backbite, you are in the side of shaitan. Even if you are a believing person, but you are in that action in the side, in the realm of a shaitan. And shaitan loves it. And I will tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. To a shaitan, he doesn't care. He never ever loses hope. He is after you every minute. Do you know why? The shaitan's biggest wish 
is that you die on a sin. That's why he doesn't quit. He knows you will repent, maybe. And he knows Allah repent, uh, forgives, maybe, if you deserve it. He knows all these things better than you do and better than I do. But what he also knows is, since he doesn't know when you are going to die, he will do his very best to make you die on a sin, i.e. in his world. Because it's going to be very hard to pass on to the side of Allah when you died on the side of a shaitan. So my brothers and my sisters, this Islam as it is and as beautiful as it is, there are two sides. And the tales in the Quran and the Sunnah are the tales of the fate of those who sided with Iblis. And look at the mercy of Allah. Allah didn't leave for us to see the consequences until we died. Because we would have said, Ya Allah, we actually didn't know. We just spoke about it. We didn't know. But he actually shows them to us every single day. People, rich people are depressed, stressed out. People who have tons and gazillions of money and Allah gives them a disease and suddenly the wealth of the world means nothing to them. Celebrities and Allah every day exposes them and their sins. Politicians, this guy you married with kids hires a sex boy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes him not to his friends, to the entire world. What kind of life is that? So we get signs every single day of those who disobey Allah. This is what they get. But we in our utter ignorance and stupidity, we think this happens to the other people, not to us. And it hurts us only when it happens to us. Yet, Allah speaks about the Jannah and what's waiting for you. And he told us, but at the same time, he gave us something to look at. Go on the internet and type beautiful islands. And look at these beautiful islands in the oceans, mesmerizing. I sometimes switch off the lights in my home. There is no light at all. And I put candles behind my back. And I put my computer, my 27 iMac there right in front of me. And I type beautiful island oceans. And I spend an hour just dreaming. If, and I tell myself, by looking at this, I am happy. If Allah gave me this in Jannah, I am happy. What if, Ya Abu Hanifa, that you are going to get 10 times better than this? And when I'm fully charged with my iman, because my eyes now desire Jannah, I go do a couple bright rak'at, and then I go to bed with a happy hope that I'm going to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray. And I do that, and it's a beautiful feeling. My brothers and my sisters, I never ever leave my home in a neutral state. Before I leave, the, from the moment Allah gives me my life back, from the very first words where I say, Alhamdulillah, that has given me back my life. And I say so that I worship Him another day. From the moment I make my salat before my breakfast, I decide, I plan, and I mean not to disobey Allah in that day. I don't go oblivious. I actually say, today I'm not going to disobey Allah. It's like if I had what? A meeting with somebody. Or a date with a sweetheart. Or gonna meet my child who has been years there. And I know my appointment or my meeting with them is at 4 o'clock. I live for 4 o'clock. As a matter of fact, I live the whole day not to disobey Allah. Allahu Akbar. When you do that, watch what Allah does. Look at the miracles that Allah does for you. So the pep talk today in few words is there are two sides to the coin. Allah sides and shaitan sides. There is no neutrality. Mean your day and choose carefully where you want to end up. On what day you're going to fill and what shoes you're going to walk in. The shoes of green of the Jannah or the shoes of the red of hellfire. There is not one pair of each. Put that in your mind. Shaitan would love you to think if there is a one pair of each. There is not. When you are walking in the street, walk and look at your feet. What pair of shoes are you wearing? Green ones or red ones? And I pray to Allah that you're wearing green ones. I pray to Allah to make this day a blissful day for you. To give you the best what is for you so that you can be the best of what you are to yourself. And as I always say, give the best of you to the best for you. And the best for you is akhirah. Dunya, use it to your advantage. Don't use it to your end. Your end is al-akhirah. 
And I pray to Allah to bless us all and to make us of the dwellers of Jannah and make us of the eligible ones of his rahmah. And sallallahu ala nabiyina Muhammad, you beautiful people, go ahead and have a wonderful day and shake the world you deserve. You deserve the breast and the world deserves you. You are beautiful in and out and make that count. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa and again 0787640873 for those who want to join the group you are most welcome Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk